Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's a big day because I am installing Integrated Engineering's High Pressure Fuel Pump Internals. This is the first step in switching my Golf R from running with gasoline to E85. Now I ran E85 in my last car and it was a night and day difference. I highly recommend you guys go and do your own research as to the pros and cons of running E85, if it's even possible in your area, and then make the decision accordingly. Now the thing is that on this platform, the high pressure fuel pump from factory does not have enough flow capacity to feed the demand of E85 when you want to run E85. And that's where this kit from Integrated Engineering comes in. This is not a sponsored video. I, this is yet another one of those things that I bought during the Black Friday sales last year. Now, if Integrated Engineering wants to come and sponsor me, uh, call me, I'm down. <laughs> All right, now let's not get confused. You cannot just pump E85 after you, you upgrade the high pressure fuel pump. There is more to it. This is just the first step. Um, on the next video, I'm actually gonna be installing Integrated Engineering's True Flex kit. And you know, there are more steps to this. I just don't want you guys to install a, a pump and then think that you can run E85. It doesn't work that way. The rest of it will be covered on the next video. This is just for the high pressure fuel pump. All right, so this is not an instructional video how to do it. I'm just bringing you guys along with me. If you go to Integrated Engineering's website, they actually post all the instructions on how to do this stuff. So I printed them out from there and that's the instructions that I'll be following. I won't do a better job than them. So I suggest look them over, see if it's something you want to take on. And with that said, let's get started.
By the way, guys, I found out about this tool from CPO's YouTube page. He has a really good tutorial on it. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and link it down in the description for you guys. He has a lot of great content on the Mark 7. So go ahead and take a look at his stuff. I know it's kind of hard to tell, but I was able to get the blade of the thing at the bottom here to go right between the factory retainer and the top of the spring. You just had to kind of coarse screw it, and then once it was mostly lined up, start squeezing it in. And now I got it nicely in there, so you can tell. It's hard to focus. Come on. There we go. Okay, I figured out what I was doing wrong. I had the top of this already tight and that was causing it to not line up with it as I was tightening this and whatnot. So the trick really is to have this in place, but it'd be loose. You see like all this is loose right now at the top, but we're still trying to line up the bottom. And what I did is I basically got the teeth into a single line and it was at an angle and I just held holding the spring, I spun the tool until it was perfectly under the retainer. So right now it is exactly under the top of the retainer and the top of the spring, it's not wrapped up with like half a coil or something. So this is exactly how I want it. And now because this is actually sitting perpendicular with this rod, now I can actually move this in place and, and use it correctly. All right, you basically have to keep playing it the whole time. Loosen here, tighten here, etc., until you get it just right. A little annoying, but it is what it is. Like it is right now, here we go. Come on. It's walking. Right there. There it is. All right. It's not difficult. You just have to know that you're going to have to walk around and adjust it. I mean, I was pulling on it at the top with my hand as I was tightening it with, with the ratchet. So, yeah, it's a trick of leverage and pulling, etc. And, and, you know, eventually you'll get it. It's not that hard. It's just it, it's not a straight on thing. So, you know, you have to play around with it to figure it out. But it's there you go. It's off.
Sorry about that. I got the garage door open. It is hot in here. And the neighbors are out there walking their dogs. And that's okay. You know. There's a brand new clamp as well. Now that everything's installed, let's put the new tune on it and then let's crank it and take it for a test drive. All right, guys, the flashing went successful and um, yeah, it started up no problem. So I'm just going to go and take it for a quick test drive. Everything should be fine, but you should always do a quick test drive. You never know if you forgot something. So let's do that real quick. All right, I'm just going to do a quick pull. One, two, maybe three. moves <laughs> yeah everything is fine so it definitely i mean it feels smooth so which is exactly what i wanted whether a high pressure fuel pump makes power or not or allows for a faster spool up or not i can't tell the difference i can tell you that it is definitely smooth and everything seems to be running perfectly fine which is exactly all I, all i wanted right now with that said Next week, I'll be installing the uh, the flex, uh, the True Flex kit, so I'll be able to run ethanol at that point. That is when I expect to see a big jump in power. So, for now, I'm happy. All right, guys. Well, honestly, that wasn't that bad of an install. Everything went pretty smoothly. Um, you know, the trick is just take your sweet time with it and make sure everything is clean. So now, again, this is part one. You'll see part two coming up soon because I will be installing the Integrated Engineering Flex Fuel Kit. That's the one that actually incorporates the sensor that reads content of ethanol in the fuel and it adjusts ignition timing, boost level, boost ramp up, um, all of that in according to how much ethanol is on there. And it does it all on the fly so you don't have to be constantly changing maps to whatever percent of ethanol content you have. Makes life a whole lot easier and I am all about that. With that said guys, thank you so much and I'll see you next time.